Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have some more updates on the earthquake swarm and possible lead up to yet another eruption in the Reykjanes Peninsula here in Iceland. Now you can see here, we're going to start off with the meteorological offices, you know, chart of all of the seismic activity that's been going on. If you watched the video yesterday, you would have noticed that there was a couple of these green stars and those are indicating an earthquake of a magnitude of over three. Today, there are quite a few more. Now, as we're looking at this, I'm just going to sort of go off on some information that has been coming out of the news and the Meteorological Society or the office, uh, for instance. So they're saying that all of this, this whole series of earthquakes actually began at noon yesterday, roughly northeast of Fagersfeld. And that's, of course, the area that erupted back in 2021. Uh, there have been almost 3,000 earthquakes that have been detected by the Meteorological Agency's automatic location system since this series began. Now it's saying of these, there are about four earthquakes that are magnitude of above four. And the earthquakes were first at a depth of six to eight kilometers, but six since 6 p.m. last night, seismic activity has sort of gotten a little bit shallow and remained stable at a depth of about two to five kilometers below the surface. Now, they are saying that the magma intrusion at Fagersfeld causes voltage changes northeast of Grindavik, which is the town that's close to there, and west of Klevervat, which is one of the areas, and causes earthquakes there. So that's some sort of off byproduct of all of this other seismic activity. And these earthquakes are often called trigger earthquakes. Uh, and since the earthquakes at Klevervat are closer to the capital area, they can be clearly felt here in Reykjavik, even though that they are slightly smaller in size. Now, they are saying that also GPS data is showing deformation at stations in the immediate vicinity of all of its activity, and the deformation is consistent with a magma vent forming. And they're saying it's also very similar to the activity that was in December of 2021, uh, but it doesn't seem to be quite as powerful. They are still going to be monitoring everything, of course, as the time goes on. If we take a look at the table here, we can see if we just go all earthquakes with magnitude of three and larger. I know a lot of people are very interested in the depth because if it is coming closer to the surface, that's uh, obviously a cause for concern. So we can see here, uh, that's today, which is Sunday the 31st, we have a magnitude of 3.2 that was at a depth of 2.8 kilometers deep. And then we have, you know, 3.4, 3.5. If we were remembering yesterday, we were seeing a lot that were closer to the four and five. And now we're getting a lot of these that are around the three. So we got one here, 2.9, uh, which was one of the strong ones. Again, I woke up because I felt this, and that was uh, this morning at 4 o'clock, magnitude of 4.2, and it was 2.9 kilometers below the surface. So there is a lot of activity that's been going on. As I said, there is a lot of, since this swarm began, they were saying there's quite a few, but of course, uh, it is something we can see here on the map of the country. A lot of the earthquakes are in this sort of Reykjanes Peninsula area. And we can see here as well, this chart showcasing the earthquake magnitude, which is the sort of Y axis. And then across the X is the sort of time. We can see here, this goes from Friday, uh, Friday at 6 PM until today. We can see there's a lot of clusters going on. So that's number one. If we go into number two, going up here, we have a lot of the news agencies talking about the big earthquake that has, as I said, was felt uh, this morning at about 4 a.m. Uh, and again, around 2,500 earthquakes we've recorded since yesterday. And they're saying too that about 700 of the earthquakes have been since midnight. Now, just a reminder, since yesterday, the level of uncertainty of the civil defense was declared uh, a yellow status, which, you know, for us everyday people, not really a big cause for concern, but it's very important for airports and other uh, rescue teams and civil defense just to sort of get their preparedness in the event of an eruption. Now, Einar Hjörleifsson, a national di natural disaster expert, did tell the news agency Vizir that this series of quakes was stronger than the one at the beginning of the year, um, and the earthquakes have been measured at a depth of around five to seven kilometers, and he believes that the magma may be at around the same depth as where these earthquakes have been measured. And of course, there are no signs of volcanic eruptions yet. Uh, but there are a lot of people watching webcams and things like that and calling into the meteorological 
agency and, and talking about, you know, some smoke rising and things like that. So they, they are aware and there's a lot of people very concerned that they might be seeing something. But the earthquakes that hit Reykjanes Peninsula today are, as I said earlier, and we, we looked at the data, they're measured at a shallower depth than yesterday's earthquakes. So we can see here, it's reported in the news as well, that uh, all of the measurements that they are looking at indicate that it's getting, you know, more shallow. And as it gets more shallower, you know, we're again talking, we're talking with Einar Skjolovsson in an interview, and they were saying, is it a sign that magma is moving closer to the surface? And, you know, how exactly should we interpret this data? And he said that, yeah, 100%, it should be interpreted that the magma flow is coming up higher uh, in the Earth's crust and now possibly at a depth of two to four kilometers. And all the GPS measurements are indicating that that's what's happening. Now, some there may be some heat there in the lava. Again, people in the area, they're looking at the old eruption site. Um, and there may have been some evaporation last night because of that, but there's no magma flowing on the surface yet. So it is something that we are definitely going to keep an eye out. Last thing before we sort of go off is the meteorological agency. They posted a bunch of these images here just showing you how the unrest has looked. You can see here the hertz uh, and some of the information and the time that's been going on. You can see the, the frequencies there and, of course, the map of basically what's going on. I expect that every day we are going to have more and more updates as things progress and as things get more, I don't know, more earthquakey, maybe maybe leading towards an eruption. Who knows? There are some reports of people saying that it is unlikely that the current cones will be the location of a new eruption should magma sort of hit the surface. They, they believe that it will be a new area altogether. Uh, obviously still in the same vicinity, but uh, I wouldn't, you know, what they're saying is don't expect it to come out of an existing uh, cone that, that was formed last time. So that's pretty much it. It's a bit of a longer video. There's a lot to cover considering, uh, you know, the earthquakes and everything that's been going on. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're staying tuned. We have a, a live stream going on uh, where a lot of people are, are talking and taking a look at the area. And I know MBF has also some live streams going on. So definitely check those out. And until next time, which could be, who knows, maybe later today or tomorrow, as things progress, I will be sure to keep you all up to date. So thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you learned something.